ora, and welcome to another episode in a series of short videos on the essence of regulation. In this episode we will look at how and why insights from the behavioral sciences have rapidly made their way into regulatory governance and practice. It is not often that a book on regulation becomes a bestseller, but a book by Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein has done that. Published in 2008 and republished since, Nudge outlines the seemingly immense potential for more innovative and less coercive government interventions to shape people's behavior. The starting point of the book is that people often behave in ways that are seemingly irrational. That is, we people often behave in ways that, from a neoclassical economics point of view, is not in our own best interest. For example, we eat more and less healthy than we know that is good for us. We procrastinate going to the gym despite the long-term positive health benefits. We do not save enough for when we retire, but rather spend the money when we have it in our hands. We ignore a red traffic light while knowing that arriving at our destination 30 seconds earlier is definitely not worth risking our lives for. You will likely recognize some of these behaviors in yourself. At least I do. But for a very long time, scholars from the behavioral sciences have explored why this is so. They have found that our behavior is strongly influenced by learned and inbuilt biases and heuristics. For example, we react stronger to a loss than to a gain. We prefer a small win right now over a much larger win somewhere in the future. We think that an average adverse event is less likely to happen to us than to others. We seek out information that confirms our beliefs rather than information that challenges it. Now that we know about these heuristics and biases, or as some other would say, now that we have a much better understanding of how and why people behave in the way they do, should government not have a responsibility to help people make choices that are in their own best interest. And that is indeed the central idea underpinning the book Nudge. It presents a way of how government and others can apply insights from the behavioral sciences to increase the well-being of people. Thaler and Sunstein use the term nudge for this approach to regulation. Their take is that regulators can influence how choices are presented to people, but without forbidding specific options and without making some options vastly more expensive for people than others. At the same time, these authors stress that it should be easy and cheap for people to avoid a nudge. Now, a typical example is the way food is presented in a school canteen. Students are found more likely to choose the healthy option if it is among the first on the counter than when it is presented later down the aisle. The use of behavioral insights in regulation and public policy more broadly has seen a rapid increase since the year 2010. This OECD report from 2017, for example, gives an overview of more than a hundred examples from around the world. A very typical example is organ donation. While many people in many countries are willing to donate their organs after they die, many people in many countries do not register as a donor. This was also the case in the United Kingdom. And after some research, it was realized that people often procrastinate filling out the required forms to become organ donors. In response, the traditional system to opt into donor registration was changed to a system to opt out of it. So the choice is still voluntary, it is just presented differently. Many countries have found that this shift has indeed raised the number of people who are now organ donors. But of course, what we really want to know is how well the use of behavioral insights in regulatory governance and practice works overall. And that is a topic of much debate. As always, it seems to depend very much on the policy area and the specific context in which regulators apply these interventions. An application that works in one policy area or country may not work in another policy area. 
or country. But across the board, it seems that at the very best, modest results should be expected. For example, the New South Wales Office of State Revenue realized that many people pay their fines too late or not at all. Eventually, this results in those people paying even more because fines increase progressively due to reminder fees and court costs. Eventually, people may even lose their driver's license. To help people paying their fines on time, the office experimented with ideas from the behavioral sciences. And one of these was to make information more salient. After some redesigning of their enforcement orders, they now have one that works a little better than the old one. Now, a little improvement can actually mean a lot in practice. In this example, the redesigned order resulted in only a 3% increase in untimed payments. This, however, represents about $1 million additional revenue. But more importantly, I think, in this example, close to 9,000 fewer driver licenses had to be suspended. So 9,000 fewer people had to worry about how to get to work, how to get their kids to school and whatnot, compared to the old enforcement orders design. And that, I think, is a very big gain in well-being at a relatively low cost. Namihi, and I hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.